Welcome, in front of me is a Think phone by Motorola and today I will show you a couple tweaks and the tricks you can do on this device. So let's get started by opening up settings and we're going to navigate to gestures and here we're going to have a couple things. So number one we have the sidebar uh, which allows you to get something similar to what, uh, what is it, Samsung has. There we go, you can enable it, and from there you have access to applications. I believe you can add more apps, as you can see right here. And you can also just take them out. There we go. And open them up in this kind of pop-up view. You can resize them, I just maximize it by mistake. But we can bring it back to... I guess it's f called freeform. As you can see, it keeps the aspect ratios the same. I cannot just like, for instance, stretch it down to be only longer, like on Samsung you would. So yeah, but obviously you have access to it. Normally, I believe if we have something, it should minimize, but it doesn't. So we can just tap on the minimize icon and this will show you this kind of, of an up head look kind of thing. So there we go. Um, obviously you have also close button there. And what was the other one? and maximize, which you can do also by swiping to one of the edges and it will act similarly as Windows do uh, on actual Windows. Anyway, moving on to the next option, it's going to be the, oops, the system navigation, which is right below the sidebar. So here you can change it from gestures to three button or vice versa, depending on which one you prefer. So there we go. Uh, I do prefer gestures myself, so that's what I'm going to stick with. We also have the uh, settings for it, so we can select uh, back sensitivity. You can also uh, select the sensitivity of the swipes from sides, and you can hide the ba bar from the bottom, which is actually a pretty nice feature. And it actually works pretty well, unlike Samsung. So here it actually just hides it, unlike some other stupid manufacturers, just shift it below off the screen. Baffling. Um, anyway, so there we go. Now if you have some kind of problems where your back or home uh, gesture doesn't really work too well, you can crank up the... Actually, no, not this one. Oh, so we don't have a home sensitivity, unfortunately. So this is only from right and left side. It shows you... Uh, this blue edge is basically where your finger needs to be for the gesture to uh, take effect, to actually recognize that it's a gesture. Now if you use gesture navigation you probably will be swiping off of the screen as you might be used to it already. That's probably the best case scenario so I don't think the option for gestures, how like sensitive they are on the sides, really matters. But anyway, moving on to the next option, uh, it will be under the display. So here we have another couple ones. So we have dark theme. We have the hard toggle, which you can find throughout the setup, just allows you to switch it on or off. But in here, you can actually tap on a text and have it set to be on a uh, schedule. So schedule can have it turn on custom time or from sunset to sunrise. So you can choose whichever one you want and this will then make it so during the daytime you have light mode and during the nighttime you're not getting flash banged by your device anymore. Now moving on to the next option, it's going to be colors as right here. And this is just completely up to preference. So whichever one you like more, select it. You have the natural and you have the saturated. Uh, I do personally tend to like more natural looks, so that's what I'm gonna switch. It might not look as glamorous as saturated, but personally that doesn't bother me. I just like it uh, where images look a little bit more toned down and actual like realistic. I don't need my Snapchat filter on my phone all the time. Anyway, uh, moving on to the next option, which is also under here, it's going to be the full screen apps. Or I guess just full screen as it's called here. And you do have an animation for it, how it affects it, uh, but it's 
kind of misses the key portion in the animation on why this happens and also uh, other downside. So apps that will usually, let's actually see if YouTube is affected by it or not. Technically I can add it, so I should be able to have it off right now. Connect to my network really quickly. What? There we go. I think I messed up the password. So uh, let's just launch whatever. Okay, that probably was a very bad, bad choice. So here you don't really get to see this just because this content isn't taking full screen, unfortunately. So I guess probably the best thing that I can explain this by is uh, maybe games wouldn't be able to uh, use this. I think YouTube is already pretty like tune in tune with like the whole bunch of cameras, teardrops and all that stuff. So it's not being affected by it. And obviously you can zoom in, which completely ignores those boundaries. Uh, but just to kind of go into it and explain what it is, is if you find an application that gives you a black or grayish bar at the top where your status bar normally is, it still technically acts as it's in full screen, but won't take advantage of this like status bar area, just because it has a whole part of the camera and just the application is trying to accommodate for it. So it's not visible in the content. Then you can navigate to here like I mentioned before, not here. Navigate into the uh, full screen and then enable that app to be forced into full screen, which will then extend the image of it past that bar. Uh, unfortunately, one of the things that you will see then is the whole punched camera uh, in your content, but obviously you're also getting a little bit more out of your display, which I would consider as a great trade-off. Now, personally, I have encountered this to be a problem as a uh, not or having the bar being visible when I was using GeForce Now. For some reason that didn't always go to full screen even when it should. Uh, so enabling it in here would completely remove that problem and force the app to run full screen. Yeah, so let's move over to next one which is going to be the attentive display and as the name would suggest it's also under the display just a little bit lower right over here. What this will do is keep the display on as long as you are looking at it. It uses a front-facing camera for this. So that's why we need to allow access to it. Oh, come on, are you serious? There we go. So you need to set it up by just looking at it. The phone appears to like need to scan your face or something. Uh, just to get a grasp of how you look like so it knows when and not to dim the display but now with this enabled here we go whenever you're looking at the display the phone will know that you're looking at it and it will keep the display on as long as you are looking at it so if you were reading books and your screen would just time out for some reason uh, having this enabled will completely prevent this from happening and because of that you can also set up your uh, screen timeout which I believe should be somewhere here as well. Anyway, I can't find it, but uh, you could set it out to be significantly lower to like seconds instead of minutes that it's usually set to. And as long as you're looking at the device, this shouldn't really affect you. When you stop looking at it, it will start the countdown for, for the screen timeout. And at which point, once it reaches it, it just locks the display. And that's it. Now, with this being said, this would conclude the tweaks and tricks that I want to show you. So if you found this very helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.